so much stuff has been done on vert with obstacles, raising bars and things like that. And the only thing that I felt like hadn't been explored was doing a channel and seeing how big a channel could go. So we put these ramps next to each other and each one had a six foot section that would break away. So the gap started at 12 feet with a bridge of death across it and I tested that out to see what was possible. And then we broke away a six foot section and then it became 18 feet. Mostly just did a few errors and then did a 540 that took the longest. And we had these roll-ins that were angled on the side, which gave you enough speed, but it was hard to adjust coming down an angled roll-in into a vert ramp, you know. And then uh, we broke away the, the last six-foot section, and that became a 24-foot gap. Um, and all I did was air it. It just it took a few tries, but that was the scariest part, was trying to do front side air. It was fun. I, I, I learned a lot from it. I actually would like to try to do it again on, in a different configuration. The pro skateboard today is different than it was. I think you have to put a lot more effort into it. There's so many pros now that to be noticed, you've got to do something really, really big, really technical, or something that's just really different. You know, and to be different usually means you got to be it's got to be dangerous. And you got to do something exceptional and put yourself on the line. And uh, you know, there's there's a lot more opportunity now, but at the same time, there's a lot more competition. So it just takes a lot more effort. wanted to do something with a loop. One of the ideas was to connect from the ramp a bar, grind the bar, land on the roll-in, do the loop, and then have a quarter pipe and do something else on the quarter pipe. If I could do that, I was happy. From there, I was kind of like, well, that's kind of, I mean, I know I can do the loop, and I know I can do the bar thing, and it, it, those were all things that I had already done, so I felt like I needed to do something else. And I was really trying to think, what could I do? From already skating my ramp and skating the oververt section, I ended up doing a, a frontside air on that oververt, which I kind of expanded and thought that maybe it was possible to open up a gap in the loop and do an air. Once I opened it, I didn't really think I was going to be able to do it. I can't believe what I just got myself into. I'm going to have to. I mean, there's like all these people there, and I had to do it. So I was forced into doing it switch frontside air. I finally got close. A few tries later, I landed and did something that I had never done before. I am not thinking about the loop with the roof anymore. I've closed it, sealed it, I'm done with it. I was just a little trick hound. I had to go home with at least a couple of tricks every single day or I couldn't sleep. It was like an obsession. You try to keep it yes for the good old days. The same old ways that kept us dying. I want to skate and I want to learn things that I've never seen before because it inspires me and it feels good. The neat thing is that video games are inspiring people to learn tricks and I know I've learned a couple from just playing video games. One of the things that was funny when I first started playing Tony Hawk Pro Skater was that you can kick flip and it can be in the air and then you can flip again and you can flip again and then you can make it. That inspired me to learn the Samba flip. You do a kick flip bendy and then you flip it again with your board. It goes both ways. The video game can inspire us and we definitely inspire the video game.
hand on my hands and give me a hell of a chance to lie and stand. A jury that wants to hang me as high as they can. Ride in the hands with Taliban, towers and rags. A thousand bags, put a thousand in cash, shining the tags. And they call pass, hard to see if the cops are in it. Got out over the top of here, the helicopter's ready. Started to run, all I heard was stop, get him. Flashlights over my face, drop the weapon. High step towards the ride, you gotta get him before they grab you. But there wasn't a spot to fit it on my own. with the rest of the flip team. Uh, at the time it was Andy Scott, Jeff Rowley, and Tom Penny and myself. Just come with the you know, yeah. Let me hit you with the you know, yeah. Cause it's not 
Back in the day, the ramps were a lot sketchier than they are today. Nowadays, you can go to a ramp and it's perfect. All the measurements are up to date, uh, big trannies, big vert, just uh, easy on your body. Back in the day, they were just like wedge ramps set up, like some sketchy thing. It really didn't have any specs to go by. They just kind of made it the best they could with the material that they had. Nowadays, what it takes to be a professional skateboarder is uh, a lot more dedication. A lot of your time is spent trying to uh, pull some stuff that you've been thinking of in, in your head and, and put it actually down in reality. Back in the day, you're still trying to push the limits just the same. It's just now uh, the tricks are a lot harder. There's so many people out there skating that are at a whole nother level, and it just brings a lot more to the table. I can definitely say that meeting Tony Hawk was one of the best things that happened. He always gets me involved in everything that he's doing, you know, and people kiss his ass. It's just made my life a hell of a lot easier, <laughs> you know, like, I don't have to really worry about much because of Tony. Like, I think 50% of the reason why I'm driving around in a Ferrari is because of him. When I was younger, it was all I rode was Tony Hawk boards. and. Uh, my dad was just like, isn't it weird that like you had 15 of his skateboards when you were younger, now he's like flying here and chilling with us. It's just been such a gradual thing, you know, like all the cool stuff that's happened. I haven't really sat down and thought about how, you know, sick it is. Hey, I'm Rodney. I got sucked into skating at a pretty early age. These are the best spots in my town, <laughs> so I got pretty good at flat ground. I never really fit into team sports. Even in skating, I just like to do my own thing. I guess keeping a little distance led me to make up a bunch of stuff. Some of it turned out to be kind of important, <laughs> but a lot of them are just too rotten to show.
Skateboarding and music have always been two major parts of my life. I utilize the energy in music to make me want to do the tricks that I do in skateboarding, you know? I've been producing for about six years. Now we've been working really hard on this album for like the last two years solid. You know, as much effort as I put into my skateboarding, I've been put into this music. And uh, we got my first album together. It's called Muska Beats 1212. We got a couple of the tracks, you know, we got the Biz track and uh, J. Ru and um, Melly Mel track going in the video game. So, you know, y'all be able to play some crazy skate moves, listen to my tracks, it's gonna be on. To me, skateboarding, it's something that you'd love to do and there's no rules. I think all sports have rules and skateboarding has no rules and it never will have rules. Skateboarding is skateboarding. It's about having fun with your friends and kicking it and going out and riding it and having a good time. It's, that's the main thing. If you can get on a skateboard and ride down the street and you have fun doing it, and even if you're slamming on your ass, it's all good as long as you have fun, you know what I'm saying? When I skated when I was young, I'd see some sort of gap that I wanted to jump off and something would just come over me. I'd just have to go fly down it and get hurt or do it and then feel good about doing it. It never really bothered me to jump off things. When you're little, you don't really get hurt. You just fall on the ground, everything's fine. And I just got used to it. Sometimes, you know, I see things that kind of taunt me. And I'm like, I'm gonna have to handle that one day soon. And it doesn't happen right then, but uh, it'll torture me enough until I have to go do it. And I just look at it and try to think, like, what's the worst that could happen here, you know? And then I just go and jump off of it. There's no turning back, you know? So basically, what you got is we kept me and Ed came here last night. We already carried ten sheets of bleed and ply off onto the roof. And what we got to do now is friggin' well drill them on. Probably last about 15 minutes when we skate that before we get bleeding well kicked out as usual. Right, see that? Yeah.
spring of 94, I was asked by the guys at Transworld if I'd be interested in doing a pro spotlight for the magazine. This being my first major interview, I was really excited and wanted to think of a way to make it interesting. I thought it would be cool if I did it all in one day. I was told that people sometimes spent months on an interview and that with injuries and all the other factors working against you, it was probably impossible. It ended up coming together, and here's a look at some of the photos and video from my first pro interview in I've been filming non-stop the new Zero video, which will be out by the time this game is available.
Damn, they're bigger than I thought they were. Yo, why they call them blue balls? He said, because they're sad. That's f up. Do an invert, you little punk. I can't do one in real life, but I can do one on a video game. What are those things called that they skate in? Like a tube thing? Half pipe. Hit a lip trick. Bust a lip trick. Do a lip trick. Don't move your f ass. <laughs> <laughs> You're ready to sack it on a rail. Hey, baby, pick me, and after, I'll buy you some cotton candy. Since you have no job and you're at home playing a video game. <laughs>